What's going on everybody, GamerSci, back with another video. Now what I want to do here is a little bit of a 2018 retrospective. Now unlike all the other videos out there, I'm not going to tell you what the best games of 2018 were, and I'm not going to tell you what the worst games of 2018 were. What I'm going to have a look at is my top 5 new retro devices for 2018. Now what do I mean by that? I mean a device that's meant for the playing of old games. So, a, a device that will that has is new. Um, it's it's not an old device. It's not a re-release, but it's meant to play games from you know whenever twenty, thirty years ago, whatever the case may be. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer here: um, some of these devices may have been released elsewhere before two thousand and eighteen. Possibly, I didn't check. But I certainly was first made aware of them in 2018 and bought them in 2018. So that being said, these are my top 5 new retro devices for 2018. Five. So number 5, first on our list, is the Arcade 1UP Street Fighter 2 Cab. Now this is split opinion a little bit, but as someone who has collected arcade cabs for a good few years now, I love this little thing. It fits nicely into the corner of a games room where I couldn't otherwise fit an arcade cab. Mine are all downstairs in the utility room. Um, it's very well made. I thought, was very impressed with how easily it went together. I've already shown that in a video. Uh, the quality on the parts seems great. I have heard people complaining that sometimes this rubs off. However, Arcade One Up will send you a free overlay and protective uh, perspex for that. Um, see, I've decorated mine with a few of those uh, lead figures. Quality on the screen, as I've said before, is excellent. If you hunt around, you can find these for under three hundred pounds, which I think is a great little thing. When you consider some people will pay a hundred pounds for a reproduction Street Fighter Two cartridge. Only gripe, which I did mention in the video, is I don't think these button, this stick, sorry, is the best. It's functional, but I'm, I'm kind of I'm used to a to a Sanwa, so I'll probably swap that out, which shouldn't be a big deal. But yeah, the quality on all the parts is fantastic. It works great, um, and as a huge Street Fighter fan, it's fantastic to have an officially licensed by Capcom three quarters representation of Street Fighter Two. Put some time in this i'll be putting a lot more into it as well um number five on my best new retros of 2018 arcade one up street fighter 2. number four is the wonderful pac-man one quarter size arcade machine from numskull i just recently did a video on this so for more details take a look at that but i'm still in awe of how much this is an absolute love letter to the original. The shape, the look, the lovely little screen, the fact that it's a high, PSP high quality wood, light up marquee, metal, mm, clicky joystick, gorgeous little thing, and just hearing the sounds, I mean, listen, it's just so nostalgic. <coughs> Isn't it? What an absolutely fantastic piece of kit this is. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's not for everyone. But to a fan of Pac-Man, this is an absolutely eye-catching display piece. And on top of all that, it plays a very good game of Pac-Man too. Number four. Pac-Man by Numskull. Three. Number three is, I suppose, slightly a little bit of a cheat, because certainly a large part of this didn't come out in 2018. Number three is what's commonly known online as the C Box. It is the Chinese consoleized Neo Geo MVS. Now, I fancied a consoleized MVS for a long time, and an old video of mine, I do show how to hook up an MVS to your telly. However, 
what was really expensive and then a Chinese company operating out of AliExpress sort of taking MV1C I believe boards um, putting them in these nice plastic cases adding a couple more boards to give you such things as various outputs you can see we've got component composite S video and RGB power in there allowing it really easy to plug into your TV and get a fantastic RGB picture from Neo Geo and of course using Neo Geo MVS cartridges slot in there which are a fraction of the cost of AES cartridges for exactly the same game now the best thing about this one as well it's all very nicely made as you can see nice little nice metal buttons the plastic seems a good quality um, so you plug in new dual controllers here focus damn you but what I liked is these ports here it actually also takes Sega Saturn pads it's my little SS1 SS2 now we all know the Sega Saturn was fantastic for 2D fighters and had a great pad for that and if there's one thing the Neo Geo is known for it's 2D fighters so anyway these were for sale earlier this year and they were around about £200 delivered the price fluctuated a little bit something slightly cheaper something slightly more um, compared to the you know 400 and up you'll pay for various American uh, consoleized MVS's now this caused a little bit of a ruckus in the uh, Neo Geo community which has never been the most inclusive as such there's a lot of bollocks talked about this um, there's a lot of true things as well but the biggest controversy seemed to come when Mad Little Pixel managed to knack his, uh, his converter through one of these now it was never actually shown that it was this that did it to be fair and to be honest I've never heard of anyone else having that problem and the YouTuber RetroCore kind of eliminated any of the concerns about this with a very in-depth and fantastic review on it which was what convinced me to pick one up so yeah absolutely fantastic thing the only problem with them these days is they don't seem to sell them anymore I'm not sure if the guy ran out of MV boards to put in it so all he seems to sell now is just the empty case with the uh, signal converter and joypad converters so you have to provide your own MVS board inside the problem is he doesn't seem to be charging any less for it um, I suppose you can pick up an MVS for 50 quid so I guess it's not that difficult to do your own but really really pleased I picked this up perfect way to play Neo Geo at home so yeah that is my number three the Neo Geo C box number two so near yet so far number two is a Commodore 64 mini now when this was released earlier in the year it was all right it was a a fun little gizmo it came with 64 inbuilt games a few good ones a lot of crap if I'm gonna be honest a lot of filler the thing itself though is nice you just plug it in play a bit of Commodore 64 um, all feels very well built obviously you all know this isn't a real keyboard it has two USB ports to power switch power in from your usual micro USB and HDMI out not a massive amount to see. Now, it, the games it had, it played very well. The emulation seemed absolutely spot on, as far as I could tell. Um, sounds all sound great, as it should with a Commodore 64. Uh, you could plug in a keyboard, a USB keyboard, and play around with BASIC. It was fun for, you know, for 15 minutes, and then it kind of got put aside. Um, it came with the joystick, which is the one part that people did criticise a lot. Uh, mine's okay, but they have been known to break. In fact, when you're playing it, you kind of feel it. The bottom of the shaft there doesn't feel overly great. Um, I think a vigorous game would kill that. I certainly want to be, wouldn't want to be playing Dilly Thompson's Decathlon on it. Um, all these are like hotkeys that you can assign to things. It works. It's functional. It's not the best. This was good enough. Uh, not bad. But again, it, it only held your attention for a little while. Until they did a firmware update. Now the firmware update essentially just allowed you to load games via the USB and basically load any game you like so plugging it in now and this is completely legit it hasn't been hacked 
This was an update released by uh, the company just before it was released in the US. Now it is, to all intents and purposes, a functioning Commodore 64, digitally. Um, you can load any Commodore 64 software on it you want. It will accept a keyboard, same as before. Uh, if you need more ports, it will accept a USB hub. Um, and it will also work with a lot of other controllers, so you're not necessarily stuck with that. Now, it's that good, and the emulation is that spot on, that it's basically become my go-to Commodore 64 now, which is pretty high praise. If I want to play Commodore 64, I'll plug this bad boy in. I do have a real Commodore 64 and a hell of a lot of real Commodore 64 games, but it's just quicker, easier to plug this in and it works absolutely spot on. Very, very well done to the makers. They've also confirmed that a full size version is on its way with a full working keyboard and I'll certainly be picking one of those up. This is, for my money, the best Mini on the market right now. It's better than the NES Mini, it's better than the SNES Mini, it's certainly better than the Neo Geo and PlayStation Minis. There's not many of them can say they top the originals. Get one. I've seen them for as low as like 40 quid online. The C64 Mini. The only Mini out there that tops the original. Just as an honourable mention, I wanted to point out these two systems that Hyperkin put out. Now this was the Smart Boy. This started life as an April Fool's joke. Um, you put your mobile phone in there, it runs some software and allows you to load in Game Boy games from there. And it's kind of, it does exactly what it says on the tin, it, uh, it allows you to play these Game Boy games, it pulls the ROM, very similar to their Retron 5 system. Um, however, it does work great, you pop your phone in, like I say, you stick in the Game Boy game, it automatically launches the app on your phone and you control it with this. The only issue I could really say I had with it was that the the free version of the Game Boy software that it uses, Old Boy, um, doesn't allow save states. Um, however, I was quite happy to pay the three pounds or whatever it was to get the full version of the software. Um, and yeah, it's actually a really nifty little thing to keep in your bag. And if you want to play some Game Boy without having to mess around with touch screen controls, it was a bit expensive when it came out. But towards the end of there, yeah, you could pick this up for fifteen pounds. And for that, yeah, I like it. Ow. Hyperkin also released this, which is the Retron HD, which is a NES clone system. It is very nicely made. It is available for the fraction of the cost of a lot of these clone systems. This one I paid £20 for. Um, now, it's good in that it allows composite and HDMI out. It powers itself just through micro SD. It has switches to switch between 16.9 and 4x3 as well as PAL and NTSC. It has thrown everything I can think of at it. It's all played fine. Um, yeah there's much more deluxe things out there like the analog NT things of that nature. The AVS I believe one of them was called. But if you can grab one of these for the 20 quid they seem to be going for now um, it gives a really nice picture, either through HDMI or through Composite. Um, it's not running software emulation like the Retron 5. Um, I believe it's essentially like a NES on a chip is how it's actually doing it. But it means it's hardware based. Um, like I say, really nicely done. It came with a very nice joypad, actually, which also works with the original NES and other clone systems. So, yeah, just a little honourable mention, if you like. little shout out to Hyperkin for a couple of nice little products this year. Number one is a console I believe has been misunderstood by many. Uh, released this year as a love letter to the original. Um, it's not that. Of course it's not bloody that. It's this. It is the Spectrum ZX Omni. This is available in multiple colours. It is the exact same size as an original 48K ZX. Um, like I say, you get different colours, different cases, buttons, covers, all sorts. Um, and what is it you might be asking? Well, it is, to all intents and purposes, a working ZX Spectrum. 
it has the Harlequin board inside, which was, someone managed to take the, the ULA chip of the ZX Spectrum, reverse engineer it to recreate it. So what you've got isn't running any kind of real software emulation, or there's hardware emulation going on, I suppose you'd say. Um, but yeah, it's a Spectrum, and what can you do with it? Well, unlike a normal Spectrum, it does some clever things. The most obvious being the SD card. And on this mess around with tapes, you can merely plug in an SD card and run all of your images from there. You have a bunch of dip switches here. Now, depending on the settings, you can emulate any of the other spectrums. So if you want it to be a 48K spectrum, a 128 toast rack, a plus two, any of the other variants, it can be achieved just with dip switches. That will turn the spec this spectrum into whichever spectrum you desire it to be. That, it merely accesses the menu for the SD. You have two nine pin joystick ports, and these will work with either Sinclair or Kempston, so normal joy pads, which is great, because remember the original 48 didn't have any and required an adapter. This is your power switch. There's an edge connector there, which I believe works with the Sinclair stuff. You've got your tape ports there. You can still run games via tape. There's a HDMI port there, which I currently believe doesn't do anything. I think that's coming in the future. And an RGB out there. And it gives an absolutely fantastic RGB picture. It's very similar to the Mega Drive 2 port. Only this one also carries power because it is possible to attach a screen to this and have yourself a little Spectrum laptop. Which is something. And that, of all things, is a reset button. Because believe it or not, the ZX Spectrum didn't have one. So, a little bit like what I said with the C64 Mini, this has become my go-to Spectrum. Um, I can load in any of my tapes, or why bother when I can just load them all from an image on the SD card. It's incredibly well made. It works perfectly. Um, I can't really see a reason to buy any, any other Spectrum. I haven't tried the Spectrum next, although I do want to. Um, but for right now, I love the Spectrum, and the best Spectrum for my money on the market is the ZX Omni. I can pick one of these up for around £100, and for me that's an absolute steal. From what I understand, there's a little bit of a waiting list when you order these, so don't expect to get one for the weekend. But have a look on the Facebook page, the ZX Omni Facebook page, or the ZX Renew Facebook page. Um, Nothing but pr high praise by the community. Um, people are modding them, doing all sorts of things with them. Um, actually, you might just be able to see in there, there are battery components in there. You can fit um, essentially e-cigarette batteries to make the thing even more portable. Now, you add those and the optional screen, and you really do have a ZX laptop. Um, if you want to know more about this, check out Mark Payne's excellent, excellent review videos on it. Uh, it really is the dog's bollocks when it comes to ZX Spectrum, and I can't praise it enough. So much so that it is the best new retro thing I bought in 2018. So thanks everyone for watching. That was the best five new retro things that I bought last year. Looking forward to see what's going to come out this year. We need to get my hands on one of those Retron 77s if they've had deemed to bring them out in the UK. Anyway... What did you buy? What do you like? Let me know in the comments. I'll catch you all on RetroTech 100 Facebook page, on Crusty Old Gamers, and everywhere else you'll find me. I've been Gamer Sai. Keep a hat.